D didn't you get my email? We're on the air. What's that? We're, we're on the air. Oh. Okay. So call to order. Okay, I'd like to call to order uh, the Thursday, October 20th uh, planning board meeting for the town of Berwick. Uh, let's go ahead and rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, introduction of board members. To my left, uh, Paul Amatucci, uh, Jerry Grable, myself, Phil Roy, and via Zoom, we have uh, board member Matt Henry. Also present, uh, Mr. Bellissimo and uh, Dave Andreessen. As our, your role is the planner, planner assistant. Pl planning and code enforcement technician. Planning and code enforcement technician. Welcome aboard and thank you, thank you for fulfilling that vital role for us. Thank you. He's turned his picture on. If he's, if he's in the room, he has to have a picture on so that people can see. Him. Matt, if you can hear us, can you go ahead and turn your camera on? Because they, they have to be able to see oh, you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. One sec. Sorry, I'm not good with this stuff. Sour? That works. Okay. There you are. All right. All right, uh, first thing on the agenda is nomination elections, uh, election of planning board vice chair. Um, do, how do we run that? Okay, so basically because I got hired by the town on last Thursday, I immediately um, responded to Mike and I let him know that I had to resign, so I resigned. So uh, we don't have a vice chair. So we need a vice chair. The board Where's Mike tonight? He's got, he's got something else going on tonight. So, uh, you know, uh, I would make a motion that we nominate Phil Roy as vice chairman. I don't feel I don't feel uh, I don't feel like I'm there for the part, so I would second that motion. Thanks, okay. Matt. Uh, I'm happy to accept that nomination and the responsibility and fulfill that role as as needed for, shall for the we, town. Uh, shall we vote on that? All those in favor? I, can I yes. vote? I can. Okay. Four. Okay. Four zero. Okay. And Take just it over. when Matt Bye. does a vote, you just do a roll call. So you can say roll call and. Uh, okay. Just that's just part of the. Okay. Law. So uh, Jerry or Paul was a yes. Uh, Jerry yes. Grable was a yes. I'm a yes, and Matt Henry is a yes. Thank you. Sir. Okay, uh, first we'll open the uh, floor for the first public comment. If there are any public comments. No public comment. We will move to public hearings and we have none scheduled, if that's correct, Mr. Bellissimo. That's correct. Okay. Uh, approval of minutes uh, from September 5th, the last meeting, September 15. Uh, as Mr. Grable was not present. We do not have a quorum and we are unable to vote on that, so we will table that for the next meeting. Old business, uh, moving on to findings of fact for 420 Portland Street, LLC, Map 71, Lot 10. Has everybody had an opportunity to review the finding of fact for 420 Portland Street? I just got one note. I, I, I noticed a typo. On uh, number one, there's just a random H there, so scratch that out. On number one. On page five. That'd be perfect, huh? Okay. It's an important legal document, yeah. That's right. I know. I know. I'm just... One on page five, was that? Yeah, page five on the under the conditions of approval, applicant shall provide the town the plan for the holding tank, and there's just an H. Okay. Oh. H shouldn't be there. If 
if there's no other changes, do we have a motion to approve the findings of fact? I'll make motion to approve the findings of fact. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and for the record, so uh, motion was made by Mr. Amatucci, seconded by Mr. Grable. Uh, I voted yes, and uh, Mr. Henry also voted yes. Yes, Mr. Uh, Vice Chair. <laughs> <laughs> the feel good? No. No. <laughs> no I, I was a chair for no, seven I years. Don't get, I don't get tied up on the yeah. titles or hung up on exactly. it. Exactly. So. All right. <laughs> Uh, so on to the next manner of business would be the finding of facts for, oh wait, what do we, School Street. Okay, this is for alternate finding of, or, or another finding of fact for the same property, correct? It's actually, no, this is a different property. It is. Okay. You got, you did uh, Portland Street and this is School Street Route 9. Uh, there's a lot of 420 there streets. Is. There <laughs> okay. is. Ironically enough. I'm going to do that. Okay. I, I get mixed up. Okay. Yeah, this is there's 420 School Street, Building B, and then there's Building D. So they're two okay. separate conditional proof, conditional use approvals. And I only have the one, or are they merged onto one document? No, they're, they're both. Have you got those on right here? The one for B is Ots Automotive and Auto Body. Okay. This is the one where we went and did the walkthrough, correct? Right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the part of it. I think I'm missing a document. Do you yeah, guys have I'm, one? I'm trying to find it on Andre and I myself. This one. Full speed. So this is yeah, for lot. Yeah, building B. Building B. Okay. And we had one for building A as well? Building D. Or building D. Building D is the one that I'm not seeing. D. D is right. Okay, I thought I was going crazy. <laughs> okay, okay. Hmm. Let me. I'll review this and uh, hand it to you guys for approval. I guess that's my bad. No, no worries. No worries. <clears throat> I, I have the building D. I will hand that down to you once I've reviewed it. We had some conditions for them, and that's out on this one. No waivers granted conditions. Was there an issue with oil tanks or, or something that was resolved on that one? There was well, there was the water tanks uh, that we need that there was supposed to be pumped out, like right. I thought we gave them some conditions. I thought we had. I just I don't know if those got resolved or. They're back behind the enclosure. There was tanks of oil next to the trailer. That's what it was. There were oil tanks. I thought they had. We gave them direction to clean yeah, that up. Yeah, I think for this, this is for Ots Automotive. For okay. The, or was it? Or was it for the entire site? No. Yeah. It was for the entire site. We did a walk through, and I believe they had some stuff to clean up because there was wetlands off to the side of that building, and they had some standing oil tanks. So I would, I just would want clarification. I think let's. I, I think we could, we can table. 420 School Street, and then, then I can look back 
Okay. You get those conditional because you're, you're probably right. There's probably conditions of approval. I just want to make sure we're not misstepping. No, that's if, important. If we did put yeah, conditions important. on them because I thought we did. In front, right? Yeah. And D is the one in back. And D in back, they had an issue with the door. You couldn't get out the back of the building. That was another condition as well. Okay. The door. Yeah. I would like to just. So I'm going to make a motion that we. Yeah, the paint shop. Yeah, you're right. I'd like to make a motion that we table uh, both the findings of facts for building B and building D until such time we can verify that the previous conditions were met. Right. We had a whole long list of stuff that we talked about, not only there, but we talked about that night. Okay. So looking for a second on that motion? A second. Okay. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. You want to do a roll call vote with Matt? Oh, yeah. So you so say like he did. He did. You say Matt. What do you vote? Okay, I got you, Matt. You're a yes. Oh yes. Okay, Vice, I'm, I'm a yes. Vice Mr. Grable. Yes. And yes. Mr. Amatucci. Okay. All right. And on to new business. Uh, request for revisit of subdivision condition of approval 115 Old Pine Hill Road tax map U. Uniform 47, Lot 47, LRB Leasing. Could you state your name for the board, sir? Hi, my name is Les Bardwell. And uh, I'm in front of you guys. Um, you, as you guys know, you just cut a, agreed to cut a lot off of a previous subdivision to amend the subdivision. After that meeting, when I went outside, I, the first time I saw this document from the planner that you guys wanted $31,000 for a sidewalk, deposit uh, my eyes fell out of my head I know I probably should have seen that when I signed the the application but sometimes these applications are you know 30 40 300 pages long um, so I you know thirty one thousand dollars for a sidewalk fee for a, a 100 foot lot seemed outrageous to me so I did some research and I w the way I look at the land use ordinance um, Sidewalk fees only apply to subdivisions and not individual lots that are cut off. So I think that it was uh, suggested by the planner in error that I pay a sidewalk fee. So I said, well, you know, it doesn't apply to a single lot, but this is an amendment to a subdivision. So I said, okay, so I guess you could look at it that way. But then on that subdivision, I had a sidewalk waiver. So I, you know, I just the $31,000 was like, I'm like $31,000 on an $80,000 lot. Like, I seems crazy. And so, but again, then after my research, the, the couple of points that I found was that, that it only applies to subdivisions and not individual lots, which is what I cut off. So I don't think it should have been applied at all. And if, if it was, you know, if her, if the old planner's thought process was, well, this is a subdivision, I did get sidewalk waivers on that subdivision. So I'm asking the planning board to uh, remove that so, stipulation. So have two reasons for wanting this way. Number one is it's not a subdivision, and number two, if they even can, if we even consider it a subdivision, you already have a waiver for it. Correct. All right. Where did where did the thirty one thousand dollar number come from, James? Do we have any visibility on that? Yeah, the thirty one thousand dollar that came with a um, with the town of Berwick just did a sidewalk project we had a per foot cost um so 200 it was it was estimated at 200 feet which the lot that was split off was 100 feet so at 100 feet at 155 dollars per foot which was the cost that it came out would be more like 15,500 typically when sidewalks are required they're required along the front edge of a subdivision you know, I, I mean, I think you could argue it's a subdivision amendment, but you also you're creating a new lot, so you follow the subdivision rules. So logically, I mean, you could argue, yeah, that you know, planner was right with you should provide sidewalks in front of that lot, which would be a hundred feet, not two hundred feet. So right. it's and half. It's half the cost, is what I'm hearing you say. Yes, it'd be it'd be half the cost. Yeah, it'd be fifteen thousand five hundred. So before we can make any determination, we probably would have to make a formal notification of the new quoted price and requirement, or no? I can I can get that from Jody on what if that's something you'd like because that that's what it came from from the 
I just think it would be we wouldn't be doing our due diligence if we didn't do that. I got a question. <laughs> is this required though for what this is just an individual lot and not a subdivision? a lot of money. It's um and it's already waived for the subdivision. Yeah, it's just it was part of the tricky part is that it was all over Mr. Bodwell's application. You know, part of the application I mean it says you know, within his application a couple different times it it mentions you know, we're willing to pay the 31000 per the Director of Public Works memo. So maybe... That, uh, that's absolutely on me. I absolutely did not see that or I would have brought that up. So I think, gotcha. the, I think the condition of approval, and if it has to be amended, you know, if that's what the board would like to see is an updated estimate at 100 feet. And then I just think that protects his interest as much as it protects ours. I, I don't know where is, is that even a requirement? I think I can I can get that for the next meeting. And Does that, I, I think that's a hardship on you as far as being able to execute your, your development currently. No, it's all it's okay. you know, and, and whatever the planning board rules I'll adhere to. So it's not uh, an issue as far as that goes, but it just when I saw the thirty thousand dollar thing, I was like, "There's really I got a hundred foot lot. There's a twenty five foot driveway cut. There's really only seventy five feet of potential sidewalk there." I'm like, "That's four hundred dollars a lineal foot. That's what I'm building a whole subdivision for with water and sewer." And I'm like, "You know, my eyes fell out of my head." You know, and and, and James is a hundred percent right. It was on the documents. I just come in. You know, civil consultant said, "Come in, sign the application." I signed the application. I didn't even expect that. So I, it's a hundred percent on me that I overlooked it, no question. Um, and and you know, and I had conversations with James that you know, I, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm well and I'm heavily invested in this town, and um, you know, I want the town to do right. And I, I honestly, I, I honestly don't think that I should have to pay any sidewalk fee on this. And I would like you guys to you know review that aspect first. That's kind of my question. In other words, where this lot was broke off, it's down at the other end of that subdivision. Is that sidewalk going anywhere if he puts it in? Or is it just that end in front of that property? I think it's, it's probably an age-old question. And I think the philosophy that the town and the direction we want to head in is we've kicked the can down the road so many times with not doing those segments. You look at Old Pine Hill Road, you know, we have nothing where if we just made you know, developers put in those segments, we'd start having things that we could connect in, you could have things we can connect into. That's it's kind that's of fine. I just need, to, for me, I want to understand, mm -hmm. you know, the logic. How we, got, how we got here is right. what I'm trying to wrap my yeah. head around. And, and right. also, you know, uh, because we have not in the past, you know, pushed that, um, do we leave it on less to now have to <laughs> start the process with the sideway, the sidewalk to nowhere? Um, so I can get a legal or, or even um, Lee J will have plenty to say about it okay. at the next meeting. So I can okay. yeah. arrange getting the quote updated and then you can have that discussion whether the fee applies. The next question I would have on the quote, you said it's 15500 roughly or something like that. Your price for putting it in on your subdivision is less than that, right? Way less, yeah, but 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 understand, you know, um, when you're building a subdivision, there are things that you know, if you just go to build a sidewalk, right, that's going to cost you a lot more money than if you're building it while you're building a subdivision. So I I just think that you know the sidewalk is not going to go in front of my property directly. There's no question because the sidewalk on Pine Hill Road is on the other side. I think the spirit of it is that when you do a subdivision, you contribute to the sidewalk fund. And then whatever side of the road the sidewalk goes on, it goes on, right? So it may not be directly in front of your property. It may be across the street. And so, I, you know, from a standpoint of if, if the planning board determines that I am obligated to pay this fee, right, then we'll, I'll pay it. And ultimately, when the sidewalk continues, it'll be on the other side, and that's fine. I just, my question is, should I have to pay it for one? And two, I definitely shouldn't have to pay 200 feet. I think I should have to pay 75 feet because that's the only amount of sidewalk that could be on that lot. Uh, so I, if if the if the planning board deems that that you know the sidewalk waiver isn't 
valid because you know I came to you and I, I agreed to cut this lot off with uh, this fee in there, and that negates the waiver. Then it negates the waiver. I you know um, I just think I should only have to pay seventy five feet if I have to pay anything and not two hundred feet. I don't know where and the two hundred feet. Came I'm from. just confused how I we got. Agree with Wes, honestly. Okay. I'm just he's done. He's done a lot in this town, and you know. It, He's an honest man. He's saying what he's got to say, and he's there's a bunch of there's a bunch of pages. He, like he said, there's 300 pages in the what he signed, and he you know he he said honest to God, he didn't know that what he was really you know he didn't know if we could at least give him a discount on the I mean what it was 31 grand and then and then uh, what 15 grand I mean if, if we could help him out the slightest bit that'd be so that I mean that at least help. Like he said, I mean, he feels he shouldn't have to pay it. So, and I, mean, we I, all, I don't know. We all know Les has the money to hire a lawyer too. Yeah, well, it's not going to go there. But I, you know, I, I think that if there's there's two paths, I would think that we could take from here. One, you guys could uh, do some research, see if I am obligated to pay it, or um, if we, uh, James said it was one hundred and fifty-five dollars a foot. If we could agree that I only have to pay the seventy-five feet that the sidewalk could go in front of my lot, maybe that's a happy, um, you know, happy medium. Well, are James, you, are, who puts the sidewalk in? Is it in this case? It's the our public works. Public works will put it in. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we're talking about a segment that goes from approximately Knox to Earth Pine Hill to. Eventually, there will be a segment, and that's kind of where the sidewalk fund goes. It'll eventually go from across his development up to the mobile home park and then down Old Pine Hill Road. So we're talking millions and millions of dollars, so every little bit helps. Sure. sure. So just okay. out of curiosity, and I'm just trying to wrap my head around how we arrived here, and, and what I'm hearing you say is you, you had a waiver for the original subdivision. Correct. When you applied for this one lot, this expense was added in. Was it an oversight on the town's part, or was it? No, I think you could probably look back through the, the language, but <clears> even <throat> when you amend your subdivision and create one lot, you're opening up a whole like a, you follow the procedure of a new subdivision. If you create one lot and you amend it, you're opening up as a new. And, and James is probably right on that, and that's why I'm saying I don't know if by by opening that Pandora's box, if that erases the waiver that I had. And, and that's why, again, I'm, you know, it's not. I'm not trying to get out of paying my fair share. I just think my fair share is 75 feet, not 200. I don't even have 200 feet of frontage on the whole property there, so I don't. Do you I, do you agree with that? I, I just don't, not seeing it on a map. It's tough to. I think it's tough for us to make. Yeah, a call the lot. The, the, the lot's facts. 100. The 100. The lot has 100 feet of frontage, so that, I mean, I think that's typically what we do, is we require the sidewalk to go along the frontage of the property. You're talking about a 25 foot driveway? Yeah. Okay. I mean, there's a 25 so foot driveway feet. cut with the swales. So there's. So 75 feet. There's 70, you could only put 75 feet of sidewalk in front of my property. Right. So what would that be? And that's. Total. Oh, that would be. Here's It'd be 11,625. Is that an agreeable. I'd, I'd be more than happy to contribute that. I think that's reasonable if it, if everybody agrees and and he's in agreement. Do we have to do that formally, or is, is this enough formality if we vote on it that it's it's all set? I can get an updated in uh, an updated quote from the director of public works. That's okay. why you have a document you can add to the file and vote on it. And then maybe Mike has a you know different take on it. Maybe he agrees, but I'd like to have him weigh on it too. Lee J as well. I think that would be in your best interest too. Yeah, have it yeah. documented. So, but you, so informally, you are agreeable to the cost for X amount square feet. Absolutely. And if we draft that up in a document, that's agreeable to you. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, can we make that an action item for the for the next meeting? Okay. Thank you, sir. Sure thing. Thank you. Good night. All right. Second public comment. Uh, no public comments for the second going round. Uh, any informational items? Mr. Bellissimo. I just want to say um, 
SMPDC is coming on board in November. Um, we've worked with SMPDC a handful of years. Um, Hannah and Lee Jay will both be planners. <clears throat> Hannah will probably end up taking the first meeting of the month, and Lee Jay will be at the second meeting of the month. Uh, I think they'll probably prefer, I think the town may prefer, it's up to you guys though. If you want them here in person, they'll come in person. My suggestion would be typical applications, maybe have them zoom in. But if you want them here, especially during, you know, highly contested or complex applications, you want them here. That's, you know, chair and vice chair. You, you guys, I'm, I'm cool with you guys making that call. Just want to say as town manager, you know, fully support the planning board. And um, Mike's been on me about scheduling a joint meeting. So that I'll work on scheduling a joint meeting between select board, planning board. Sometimes we include Envision Pro work as well. Okay. And I, and I think, I, I know we had talked about this previously with uh, regard to Zoom and embracing technology and how it worked for COVID, but I, I do think we're kind of in a unique quandary right now with personnel and staffing where I, I think we should embrace technology in order to be able to further, you, you know, the projects of the town so we're not hindering the town and being sensitive to uh, those folks schedules i i would be amenable to that within reason um unless we had a highly contentious project where we would definitely want them here i don't know what how you guys feel about that yeah and i think with with people and schedules and that sort of thing and as we saw tonight you know had had matt not been able to get on we couldn't even have had a quorum here right because our quorum has changed now that we have permanent seven permanent members we need four for voting so okay. uh so with doing that uh and then requiring those four to show up here uh in person is could as it was today a hurdle so yeah i think if we continue the availability <clears throat> of zoom uh although if you can get here get here I like coming. In, I like coming in person. To be honest, this is. I mean, I'll I'll be there. I'll be there in two weeks. Matt, can I ask you a question? Did you get my email about this meeting? I, I don't think so. I don't think I I saw like uh, a few days ago. You you know introduced yourself as the new. Uh, I, I don't know. Excuse me if I'm wrong, but the. Um, assistant to code code assistant or something like that sure or, or, or how, like planning it planning and code enforcement planning and code yeah okay yes yes <laughs> um but yeah no um i got i got your introduction and i don't i didn't unless you send an email i'll look right now um, unless it's an email recent I that, that email said that that email said um the meeting was scheduled for tonight, so if you can let me know, because I know uh, Paul. Thankfully, I hopped on Zoom real quick, so. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. Any other info Sorry. Any other informational items? I just want to formally introduce Dave in his in his new role of just yeah, planning and code technician, and Dave's already been able to pick up the baton in a lot of ways. We're happy to have him in the office. Absolutely. Great. Thanks for stepping Good up, Dave. Choice. Thank you. Yeah. I guess I, I also could mention where um, Joe Roussel is part-time interim code officer. He's in the office Monday and Wednesday, typically in the mornings, 8 to noon, and we are hiring for code enforcement officers. So if you know anybody looking to get into the field, have them contact me. Mm. All right. If there are no uh, further items for consideration from the esteemed Burgess meeting room in the depths of the Berwick Town Hall, I would like to make a motion to adjourn the planning board meeting second that motion all in favor aye